Cheney was so sympathetic in the role that he was able to make a connection with the audience that that even people who might come in the theater hating the Chinese would come out with a different feeling that these were really, uh, these people were human beings also. It amazed me that this, this guy I had seen in pictures wearing a, a cap and a suit and a tie and suddenly he's, he's bent over and he, he looks like a Chinese, he acts like a Chinese character. That's what one reviewer said one time in the 20s. What else can this guy do? The role of Fagin in Oliver Twist went automatically to Lon Chaney. The title role was played by Jackie Coogan. When we hired him to play Fagin, we hired the outstanding actor, both in ability to play anything and the ability to look like anything. When it came time to do his stuff with me, we went to work like on a Monday morning and I met him for the first time and we got up and rehearsed this scene. It was the pickpocket scene where Fagin teaches Oliver how to pick pockets. And my dad told me before that, he said, watch him. He said, he's, uh, he's a thief. He'll steal the whole scene from you. Be careful, do every trick. But we rehearsed and uh, we shot it in the first take. The only thing he ever said to me was after that, he, he came over after we had done the scene and he says, uh, hey kid, you're all right. But he gave a wonderful performance. The same could not be said of this film, which began life as The Heart of a Wolf, with the highest credentials. Its story co-authored by Lon Chaney and Irving Thalberg, the young head of production at Universal. But the company saved money on the director, who wasn't up to the task. Cheney always said he needed direction despite his experience, otherwise he might overact. Titled The Trap, it was the first film to be advertised with this famous slogan. The Shock was another for Universal, but it came in for severe criticism. Irving Thalberg received from studio boss Carl Lemley a letter saying how disappointed he had been by The Shock and The Trap. I say to you, Irving, I'm worried about the future. I am not going to see you produce any more flivers. It has always been thought that the idea of making The Hunchback of Notre Dame was Irving Thalberg's, but Michael Blake found that Alfred Grasso, Cheney's business manager, had kept papers proving otherwise. Well, Hollywood history has been rewritten because Lon Chaney, like a lot of stars back then, was looking to find material for himself, and he actually optioned the right to Hunchback of Notre Dame and was trying to find financing for the picture. It eventually came to Thalberg, and he convinced Lemley. The extent of Cheney's involvement has never before been realized. It ranged from who would direct, to who would write, and who would play Esmeralda. Thalberg had recent experience in making epics. His baptism of fire had been Foolish Wives, for which Eric von Stroheim had rebuilt Monte Carlo, and had gone on shooting until the cost rose close to a million dollars. Behind the set of the Foolish Wives Casino rose a more economical set for the Cathedral of Notre Dame. It would be combined with a miniature to amaze audiences, just as Cheney himself would startle the world with his most extreme makeup yet. Cheney's inspiration came from an illustrated edition of Victor Hugo's novel. It meant that he had to alter his whole body. Making up took three hours a day and was extremely uncomfortable. Patsy Ruth Miller played Esmeralda. 
I felt that he almost relished that pain because it it gave him that feeling that he wanted to have of a tortured creature. He did obviously suffer a great deal of discomfort, but a lot of the, the, the myths behind Cheney are just that, myths. The, there's no truth that he was a masochist. Uh, he was very proud of his work. He was very professional about his work, but he would never endanger himself to the point that he'd hurt his body, that he would never work again. I mean, it's foolish when you really think about it. Everyone said he wore a 70 pound rubber hump, and it's not true. It was five to 20 pounds, and it was made out of plaster. And it fit on a harness that he wore on his back, similar to a backpack, attached around the waist. And up on the upper portion of the breastplate area, he had some ropes. And he would tie, take the rope, and he'd bend down and tie himself here so he would be in a stooped position. Cheney got his friend Wallace Worsley as director. Worsley had done The Penalty and three other Cheney productions. Wallace Worsley was the director, but in my opinion, Lon directed it more than Worsley did. One of the things that I learned about acting from him was that you don't have to feel the emotion enough to really cry real tears or tear yourself apart. He, I don't think he would have approved of the school of acting bit. What he kept saying to me, remember you are an actress and an actress's job is to make the audience feel. Doesn't matter whether you're torn apart inside, if you do not tear the audience apart, you are not playing the part well. He convinced me, even though I was three years old, that there was a hunchback somewhere in me. There was a shadow of this hunchback, even though I was a normal kid. But my feelings for him were so terrific that I burst into tears. Every available arc light in Hollywood was used to illuminate the massive night scenes. Quasimodo is besieged in the cathedral with Esmeralda as the Paris mob rises. something people hadn't seen before. You know, this was medieval Paris and all the sets and, and the, the crowds and here you have this hunchback character that the people love. People feel sorry for when he doesn't get the girl. And when he dies at the end and he's ringing the bells, you know, he's ringing his own uh, t uh, death knell. It was a tremendous performance. Hunchback established Cheney as Hollywood's outstanding character star. His modest announcement that he was now at liberty was followed by a picture for Paramount and then one for a new company, Metro Goldwyn, occupying the old Goldwyn studio at Culver City. In charge of production, Irving Thalberg. But MGM insisted on publicity, while Cheney was ambivalent about it. Cheney's approach to publicity was, I get more publicity 
If I say nothing and do nothing, than if I stood there and smiled. For instance, a prime example is the 1925 MGM Studio Tour, which was made for the stockholders of Lowe's Incorporated. And they had all the MGM stars assembled on the front lawn in front of the dressing room row, and the camera pans by, and you see Norma Shearer, John Gilbert, and everybody in it. And then as we come towards the end here, here's this guy with his back to the camera, and he's in a very animated conversation. And he turns just ever so briefly so you get a quick look at the face and then turns back and that was Cheney. He had embarked on a rare publicity tour for Hunchback and thrilled this boy when his picture appeared in the papers but he avoided interviewers and the press regarded him as a man of mystery. Between pictures he used to say there is no Lon Cheney. He was what I would call a self-enclosed man if you know what I mean. Not that he wasn't outgoing in many ways. He was very sweet. Uh, he was uh, easy to chat with if you got him in the right mood when he wasn't thinking of his part. Uh, but he did not enter into Hollywood as such. I don't recall his ever being at any parties and I don't think that many people knew much about his private life. He kept it pri His private life was private. There are few personal photographs even these shots of his farewell to Hazel and Creighton were taken on the Hunchback tour. There are shots of him clowning on the set with Wallace Beery. A few snapshots show him on holiday in the mountains. He built a cabin in the woods at Big Pine. And there are home movies taken by his friends, the Dumphys. Here, Cheney clowns with his wife, Hazel. The other man is William Dumphy. Little is known about Hazel, but they were a devoted couple. Cheney was so keen on filmmaking that he bought one of the first 16mm cameras. This still is the only evidence of his filmmaking. The footage he shot has disappeared. Cheney was no recluse. Here he is with Western star Harry Carey, with director Clarence Brown, with the new actress Greta Garbo. Cheney stood up for the best interests of the crews he worked with and was generous with money and advice. One man he helped was Boris Karloff. He, of all people, uh, gave him the, the best single piece of advice he had ever been given. Uh, it, it was at a time when my father was um, certainly an unknown, struggling actor and a bit discouraged. Uh, and Cheney Sr. gave him a lift home. And in the car, my father was asking his advice, and Cheney Sr. said to him, the best advice I can give you is to, to find something no one else can do and do it better than anybody else can do it, and you'll leave your mark. Cheney was Metro-Goldwyn's first star in the company's first film. His director was from Sweden, Victor Seastrom. Cheney co-starred with Norma Shearer and John Gilbert. The clown takes revenge on the men who have betrayed him. Tully Marshall as the Count. Mark McDermott as the Baron. Cheney plays a scientist in the Andreev play. His discoveries are presented to the Academy by his sponsor, the Baron. Scientist joins a circus using the slap as his act. <laughs> 